Bowl Mania continuing a first for two programs, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Central Florida and Baylor, both teams making their first BCS Bowl appearance in school history. Ed, what's the key here? After a great start for UCF, they really started to bumble and stumble down the stretch. Barely beat SMU. Barely beat South Florida. You need a miracle catch to win a game. This is a team that George O'Leary had playing really well at times, got the big win against Penn State, but they did not look like a BCS team at the end of the season to me. Well, I'll tell you who did look like a BCS team for most of the year, Baylor. And part of the reason, the big reason, was this offense. Art Browse does a great job taking the spread offense to a completely different level, but you see a guy like that. Lake Seastrunk, who was hurt during the course of this season, should be back and healthy. That's another theme that we see in bowl games. Guys that are banged up at the end of the year have an opportunity to get healthy. A guy healthy like that, I think, would be real. Does real anybody problem. play without shiny helmets anymore? <laughs> it's the it's hot like thing. Everybody has the Well, they, they, either, they either go shiny or they go matte finish. Yes. I mean, they, yeah, one that's the one extreme thing. Goes. Baylor is very much like Oregon and all those different combinations. All right, the combination here. What's the winning one in your mind, confidence-wise? It's really amazing to me how much Art Browns has this program going. You talk about Baylor. They're going to have a new stadium next year on campus. This really is going the right way. I think Baylor absolutely smoked Central Florida. 35 confident. Whoa, that's the biggest one. I wish I could put every confidence point I had on this game. I can only go up to 35. <laughs> I will go 35. And this, this is no disrespect to UCF and Coach O'Leary. I think they've done a fantastic job. I just think when you talk about this Baylor team, you talk about this dynamic offense, you talk about Bryce Petty, one of those guys that was playing great all year long, and a defense playing much better for most of the year under defensive coordinator Phil Bennett. It's not good when you guys are on the same page, stacking the chips and going all <laughs> in. So, Todd, where are you? Call. You're talking about Lake Seekstroke, Bryce Petty, Antoine Goodley, the speed of this team. Listen, I love Blake Bortles. I think he could be a first-round draft pick when he does decide to come out, whether that's 2014, this upcoming draft, or 2015. But this defense cannot match up against Baylor. This Baylor team, when you look at it, 30 points or fewer just once this year. I'm going to go 36 points. I'm taking that Oklahoma State point. I'm adding it at 36 points. Okay? <laughs> Todd, 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 Todd. <laughs> wrong you, oh, wrong oh, bub. Do you guys remember that? Like That was a big thing amongst UCF fans. That was called the Bowl Mania uh, preview show on ESPN. And obviously, you, no one was giving UCF any chance whatsoever to even you know hang with Baylor. Do you remember that particular show? Did it, the guys watch that or talk about that? All the confidence points in Baylor? Hey, everybody so I'm going to tell you. Yeah, everybody. My, let me tell you my Chris on. Um, so it wasn't that one. The one I saw was the one with Mark May and Lou Holtz. And Mark May, the arrogance in which he talked about us just really, just really, just really got under my skin. He said, man, Baylor's going to put up 60 on them. 60 points to a George O'Leary defense? You think I'm going to come home to that? Man, you out your mind. So that was, that was my, that was my little, that was my little push I needed. I know Brandon Alexander, me and Brandon Alexander and Speedy was watching that together. So that was enough push for R3 in my room at that time. What about, what about you guys? Did did you guys talk about the disrespect? I mean, you guys had to have been aware of it. Like, is there such a thing as bulletin board material? I mean, I mean that was on TV. You can't tack it on a board. But did you guys talk about that or just kind of like just kind of put it out of your mind as you were preparing for the game? I think for, for me, it, it's just another one of those moments where, you know, don't believe everything you watch on TV, ladies and gentlemen, uh, because – I would say going into that bowl prep, I knew we were going to stomp them. Like there was absolutely no doubt in my mind watching their defense, game planning for that, everything that we were going into it. There, It was an all-time high confidence. And watching that, to me, it was kind of laughable. It wasn't really bulletin board material because I knew how far off it was going to be from reality because – we were the ones putting in the work. And, you know, I watched every single play they did, you know, they did our, the way our offense prepared. We knew everything that they were going to do. And we had an answer. 
And, you know, we didn't even have to throw the ball until the third or fourth drive. And so it was, again, just something where, you know, I remember, you know, kind of being there with some friends and, and watching it and uh, being just a little bit mind blown that people who are, you know, professionals, you know, who have this opinion, I, I, I get it, you know, in terms of, oh, it was a close game with SMU and all of these different things, but it was, it was kind of a non-factor in my mind because we were so laser focused just to go kick the absolute shit out of that team. And, and we did. So I don't know if I could say that on here. So sorry, fans. No, it's fine. It, it gets me fired up. Just watch, it gets me fired up just watching because, you know, we play that game ten times out of ten. I honestly think the outcome that happened is like one of the more favorable outcomes for Baylor. Honestly, in my opinion. What about you, Chris? This was actually going to be your last game as a UCF Knight. Joey and TP still had seasons left to play. TP, one more season. Obviously, it was an important one for you just for that reason alone. But were you feeling the disrespect going into it? Like, was there any – I don't know if you had – did you have bowl events with Baylor players? Was there any interaction with Baylor players where maybe did you feel some some disrespect from that side? Uh, as far as, like, the bowl events, no. But I want to backtrack just a tad. So, I was lucky enough to be a part of the the bowl team that played the Liberty Bowl. Okay. Right. We played Georgia. And 20, they had 2010 in spot, Georgia. Right? And Latavius oh. Murray wins as a game when he touched on. Yeah. Right. That was my that was my retro freshman year. And I started that game and I was playing left tackle that whole game. So I was a part of the team where they had that whole everybody doubted us. There was no way we were gonna win. And so I had I could see it in the locker room. I could see that mentality. And so by the time we had gotten to, you know, fast forward to 2014 playing this game, this team had even that mentality time times 10. You know, so I already knew going in, kind of side, or going on what Joe was saying, what we expected them to do, they did. Their defense, they didn't change anything. It's like everything they had done all year, everything we had studied on film, they did it to a T. It was like when they, when they would motion the linebacker, Joey was like, they're going here, and they would go, you know. And so it was very – it was so simple to run our game plan versus them because we knew it. It's like Joey was saying, if we played them 10 different times, we would beat them every time. They would never beat us. They could not beat us. You know, it would just, just wouldn't happen. Sorry. Joe, you were kind of shaking your head. Was was there like was, any interactions with Baylor players? Like, were there any bowl events where you guys were together? Did that happen that trip? I, or I, I, had, disrespect? I, had, I had some. I won't speak for Chris, but I ran into their. We ran into their D line at at a bar or something before, and you know we were enjoying our time in Scottsdale. And uh, uh, this this guy right here, this D tackle, I think I dirted him on that play. But I think uh, I think I let him know a couple of days before. I think I I think I let him know a couple of days before that the the man was probably one of the worst defensive tackles that I had seen on film, and I, I, I kindly let him know at the bar, you know what was coming. Um, but again, part of it was just the confidence, and you know I think I think the Baylor guys were probably listening to ESPN a little bit too much because. Uh, to me, there felt like a lot of misplaced confidence leading up to that game that I didn't really like. Uh, and, you know, we, we sh shared some words a couple days before the game, but, you know, it, it, it was nothing that wasn't played out on the field. So 